Hi everyone, this is Adam Virgil, and I'm really excited that you're here, because I know that you're going to get so much from this. You're going to learn so much, and you're going to be able to build comprehensive tools that will be valuable for you, your employers, and the athletes that you work with. Together, we're going to learn how to use Google Sheets to collect a bunch of different pieces of information and collate all that information together into the same framework that allows us to visualize things in a unique and exciting way. And we'll also be able to integrate the things that we're collecting into program design. And to start, what we'll need to do is create athlete profiles. We're going to take one small step at a time and you'll see as this develops uh, what interests you and what doesn't and you'll have opportunities to opt in and opt out of different components depending on what is relevant to you. But one of the requirements for this framework to work is having athlete profiles. And to do that, we essentially just need to create a little table of our athletes. And the things that are going to go into this athlete profile are going to be things that really don't change much. For example, an athlete's name, or their positional group, or their current team. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to put into my profile, but you should be looking through that lens when you're deciding what you put into yours. So let's start with the athlete's name. We'll just say name here. And then we'll add in position maybe shot side or dominant limb or preferred limb. We'll have DOB for date of birth. We'll want to store an image for the athlete. Not, we'll go over how to store images. So let's go image URL and we'll say image here just for me to show you something and then I'll probably remove one of them. And then what else do we care about? We're going to want their current team if we're dealing with multiple teams and an athlete can change teams. We're also going to want to have, let's say that we want to calculate their age from their date of birth. So we'll have their age in here. And then something that's really important, especially when you're dealing with changes in your athlete cohorts over time is we'll say this, we'll call this active athlete. And this is an area where we determine which athletes in our profiles are active and which are archived so that we can control who shows up on our reports and when they show up on our reports. I'm going to go through an example athlete here, filling out information, and then we're kind of going to fast forward and I'll show you what all my profiles uh, look like. So let's start with the athlete's name. I'm going to add an athlete. Their name is Laquan, Laquan James. The position of this athlete, let's say they're a, uh, they're a forward. Their shot side is, is right. Their date of birth is 1-4-2000. And now things get a little bit interesting. I have videos on how to get images into Google Sheets. You can check uh, my YouTube page uh, for those. But to go over this briefly, there are two different ways that you might want to do this. The first is you can use an image URL. So for Laquan James, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get an image URL from a page that we visit. I'm going to go to ESPN, ESPN.com, LeBron James, and let's go to this page. How we can get this image URL here, or whenever you see an image, ooh, this, okay. we can right-click on the image if you're on a PC, and you can copy the image address, or you can open the image in a new tab we open it in a new tab, I'm just going to click on the tab that opened. This right here is the image URL. So we can copy this in image URL and we can add it to our database in two different ways. The first is we could paste it in here where this image URL is. And in our image area, we can go equals image which is a function in Google Sheets that gets an image from a URL, and we can select the cell with the URL in it, which is cell E2. And close the parentheses for the image function and click Enter, and we have the image there. The other way to do it is let's remove that image, 
and let's click on the cell F2 where we want the image to go and go to insert image image in cell and we can say by URL and paste the URL of the image that we copied go to insert image and we have the same thing and we don't need this image URL anymore I can remove it and I'm actually going to remove this column because we don't need it. Then another way to get images into Google Sheets, in case you don't want to deal with URLs, is we can go to Insert, Image, Image in Cell. Or actually, let me remove the image first. We go to Insert, Image, Image in Cell. And we can get something from our computer. Uh, so I'm going to browse my computer. Um, I have this thing called Headshots with a bunch of headshots in it. And I actually don't even, and here I have uh, the headshot that I want. I can click on it, and it'll also go into that cell. So there are a couple different ways to get images into cells in Google Sheets. Current team. I don't even know what teams. Well, we'll put this guy on the, on the tunes, uh, the, the tune squad. And we'll put some other guys on the Mon Stars uh, for an example. If anyone has watched Space Jam, you'll understand what I'm talking about here. We'll calculate age in the end. For active athlete, this is what I like to do. Uh, for what we're going to do, all you need to do is put a true or a false into these cells. To, and true would mean that the athlete is active, false would mean that they're not. But the way that I like to do this is I like to go to insert checkbox into each of these cells. And you'll notice that it says false up here. So I didn't type in false, I inserted a checkbox. And when it is unchecked, it is false. And when I check it, it becomes true. So this is the way that I like to manage my active athletes. I like to check and uncheck checkboxes. The last thing that we're gonna do here is we're gonna calculate age. Cause I think that a lot of people uh, like to do this um, and sometimes it's difficult uh, from a date of birth if you don't know some functions in Google Sheets. So let's go through that process relatively quickly. And to calculate age, we're going to use a function called days360. So equals, which in Google Sheets is saying, hey, I want to put a function in here. Or I want to perform an equation in here. I don't just want to enter in some data. Equal days, days360. Open the parenthesis and let's see what it needs. It needs a start date and an end date, pretty much, and the method is optional. And it's going to calculate the difference between those two dates. So for our start date, we want the date that the athlete was born on, comma. Now for the end date, there are a couple of options you have. You could get the maximum date in your data set. Um, but for us, we're going to use another function, and it's called today uh, in Google Sheets, which pretty much just brings in the date for whatever today is on your calendar. You know, today is our end date, so we're looking at the difference between this person's birth date and today. And let's not worry about the method for now. And click enter. Now this is the number of days between this person's birth date and today. So what we need to do to turn this into years is we have 365 days in a year, or um, actually, because of leap years, uh, 365.25 days in a year. So if we divide the number of days by 365.25 and click enter, now we have the age in years of this person. The last thing that I want to do here is add some criteria to make sure that when we drag this formula down and stuff, it doesn't cause any errors and the way that we can do that is we can add an if statement before this whole thing so let's say before we do this we're going to check we're going to say if open parenthesis now we decide what we're checking for some logical expression and then we tell it what we want it to do if that expression is true and what we want to do if that expression is false and our example here is if the name equals quote quote or if the name is blank comma 
Now, what do we want it to do if that's true? So if the name is blank, we want it to be quote, quote, which means blank. So if the name is blank, we want this cell where the age is to be blank, comma. If not, then we want to perform our age calculation here. And we'll close that off and click Enter. Now, if we copy this formula or if we um, drag this formula down, uh, we'll get blank cells instead. Now, the last thing that I want to do so that I don't have to drag this formula down, and this only works sometimes, it depends on what the, what the formula looks like, is I want to make this into an array formula, which means that it'll apply to each row in my data set as I add them so that I don't have to drag this formula down and, and wait for data to come in. The way that we can do that is we can hold down Control Shift and click Enter on when we're inside that formula up here. And when I did that, this array formula pops up with a parenthesis on both sides. The last thing that we need to do to make this a true array formula or make it work is to do a colon A where A2 is and do a colon D where D2 is and click enter. And now notice there's nothing, there is nothing in this cell, no formula or anything. And if we enter in a name, I'll say Adam, we have a calculation show up. And the calculation is not right because we don't have a date of birth, but if we say 2-4-2000, now we have another age show up. So actually, now that I think a little bit more about this, maybe instead of saying if A2 is blank or if the name is blank, we'll say if B2 or uh, we'll say if D2 to D is blank, then we want it to be blank. That way, if someone doesn't have a date of birth, we're not calculating their age. Now, before we end this video, what I want to do is I just want to format this a little bit so that it looks kind of nice. There are a couple of things that I want to do. The first thing is let's label this tab at the bottom. Double click on it and go to name it profiles. You can also rename the tab by right clicking on it and go to rename. You can also change the color. So maybe I'll just change the color to green for now. And then I want to format this area so that it looks nicer. The first thing that I'm going to do is I like a certain font. So I'm going to click on the cell that is above 1 and to the left of A to select everything in the sheet. And I'm going to go to my fonts right here. And I'm going to make it Varela round. I like that font. Then select row one and hold down control and click b for me to make everything bold i'll select everything again and i'm just going to center it horizontally and center it vertically for now select column g the age column and i'm just going to format this because i don't want all those decimals in the age i kind of want to reduce the decimals by clicking on this button here to just one. I'm going to highlight my header row and let's make it this dark gray color, make the font white. And now I'm going to select cell A2 and go to format, alternating colors. This is so we alternate colors for each row so that it makes it easier to read. And now we define where this alternating colors applies to. We can have a header color, color one, color two. Um, you can pretty much create your own styles. I already colored my header. I don't want the header to be colored. And I also don't want this to apply to the range A1 to H2. I want it to apply to the range A2, which is the first cell here, to H, which just brings it to the bottom of our sheet, just like that. And I'm okay with the color one being white, color two being this light gray. We can click done. And now we have kind of a nice looking spreadsheet to put our information in. The last thing that I want to do here is I want to add a filter to this in case I want to sort my athletes and figure out like who I need to add, who I need to activate and stuff. So, so let's click on 
cell A1 and highlight all these headers here. And we can go to data, create filter. And now we'll notice these little bars next to each header. And we'll also notice this green box around our data. And what this is doing is it allows us to sort and filter the data. If we were to add a new name into this list, let's add Adam into this list, notice the green box goes down. And how we sort and filter is by clicking on one of these bars or one of these three bar sequences. And now we can sort this A to Z. Maybe I don't want this person at the top, I want Adam at the top. And if we sort A to Z, now our sorting has changed. And maybe I just want to see Adam. I don't want to see the other guy. I can uncheck the other guy and click OK. And now I only see Adam. And we know that there is a filter on this information because of the filter icon that now shows up here instead of these three bars. To get rid of the filter, we can click on the filter and go to Select All to select everything and click OK. Now I'm going to remove Adam from this list. And the very last thing I'm going to do, I promise, is I'm just going to increase the size of this header so that it doesn't look all crunched and I can actually read what's going on. So let's click on row one and let's make it a little bit bigger. And format, I'm going to wrap the text. Text wrapping wrap. There we go. I can read everything. I can add more information. And I'm going to zoom, zoom out, zoom back in, and we should have our profiles. And boom, uh, we're back. One thing that I will note is that I also added the athlete's current jersey number because I might want that just to display in my visualizations. I'd be really interested to know some of the things that you guys collect in your profiles. Leave a comment below so that we can all learn from one another. In the next video, we're going to build out a testing database using key performance indicators or KPIs, and we're going to build a framework to make that really dynamic. And as you go through this, as we continue to develop this, you will be able to incorporate monitoring data, data from exports, and we're going to go through each of those things. If you found this content helpful, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It means a lot to me and the YouTube algorithms take this stuff seriously. Um, and the more people we can help, the better. So thank you for watching this video and stay tuned. There's gonna be some really cool stuff coming and you're going to wanna be a part of it.